Achievements and trophies are put into games by developers to encourage players to play more of the game and try new things. But rather than tempt you into finding a bunch of collectibles or beating a large boss, some achievements and trophies incredibly reward you merely for booting up the game. We're looking at you, Deadpool. Hey, what's that? You guys tracking my every move now? Free? This game cost £40, Wade. But Wade Wilson's not the only one pulling this trick. Here are seven sarcastically easy achievements you got just for starting the game. We'd say beware spoilers, but they're literally at the start of the games. Sly! Come in! Sly! Do you read me? Yeah, I read you. Loud and very loud. Before Sucker Punch were making sneaky samurai in Ghost of Tsushima, they were making sneaky raccoons in Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus was first released for the PlayStation 2 20 years ago in 2002. <laughs> Sorry, just having a tiny breakdown there. 2002 was 20 years ago. <sighs> anyway, this was way before Sony introduced trophies on the PS3 in 2008. But in 2010, Thievius Raccoonus got a re-release as part of the Sly collection for the PS3, and with that came the addition of shiny new trophies that any thieving raccoon would be happy to snaffle away with their tiny, unsettling, human-like hands. Uh, and there's one trophy that feels like a complete steal, mainly because you get it before even starting the game. Boot up Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus on PS3, and before you even hit the main menu, you're awarded with the bronze trophy, Sucker Punched. Going by the description of Enter the World of Sly Cooper, this was probably done as a nice hey, welcome to our game thing, but sadly, it also looks a bit keen. I mean, Ratchet and Clank didn't need to throw us a freebie to get us to play. Have some confidence in yourself, Sly Cooper. I'm sure they'll give you a PS5 game too. One day? Maybe? <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. 2007 was a big year for The Simpsons. The Simpsons movie came out and the show reached season 19. Wow, that's an incredible 10 seasons more than they should have made. But 15 years ago, another fun bit of Simpsons media that appeared on video game consoles was the excitingly titled The Simpsons Game. Simpsons. To be fair, the first game they made was called The Simpsons Arcade Game, so they have form. Now this game is actually pretty decent, a fun reference filled romp for Simpsons fans to run around in causing chaos, but it also couldn't resist an ironically easy achievement before you even begin. Press start on the title screen and you'll be awarded the achievement, press start to play. Ha <laughs> ha hilarious, and the description of the achievement is, easiest achievement ever. Huge season 19 energy here. Starting up Deer Simulator, players might be slightly confused at the lack of, well, deer. Instead of being welcomed with a wacky deer simulation, you're met with a rather detailed and very human character customization menu. But our advice is to ignore all that, as before you even gain control, the character you make steps out into the road, tries to save a deer, and gets hit by a car. Oh dear. After this painful introduction, you wake up reincarnated as a deer yourself, and the game begins, rewarding you with the achievement Self-Sacrifice. Well, to be honest, it wasn't really my decision to make, so I'm not sure that I should be given an achievement. Okay, I'll take it. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink. Dig? Fallout New Vegas is a game that starts with a bang. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. No wait, sorry, I mean a bing. Chandler bing. Indeed, when you start up this post-apocalyptic adventure, before you can take a single step, some dude called Benny, aka Matthew Perry, aka Chandler Bing from Friends, puts you in a hole in the ground via bullet. 
Fortunately for you, he's a terrible shot, as you later wake up a little worse for wear in a doctor's surgery. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. Do bears wear rings? Sorry, I'm just a little fuzzy on account of having recently been shot in the brain. To test your cognitive skills, the nice Dr. Mitchell has you do a series of tests. That is to say, go through Fallout New Vegas' thinly disguised character creator. Huh. I can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I've just been shot by Chandler, Dr. Mitchell. I don't need you to roast me as well. Go through all his tests and you'll have set up your character ready to start the actual game. This will complete the quest Ain't That A Kick In The Head, which also awards its players an achievement with the same swinging name. Well, ain't that a hole in a bing, sorry, boat. Again, recently shot in the brain. Perhaps, but unlike darkness, there is more light than meets the eye. You might be surprised. Oh, I hope so. Kingdom Hearts is a somewhat complicated series with at least 13 games in its roster. What, you thought there were only three? <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. All these added games mean that there's a lot of what can generously be called plot to be remembered. Seriously, Kingdom Hearts is full of more spiky-haired anime boys than the bathroom queue at a London Comic-Con. The time has arrived. So, for a useful reminder of who these all are, Kingdom Hearts 3 does some special things in its opening after you select New Game. First, it plays a cutscene of two dudes playing chess explaining the Keyblade War. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Huh? Of course I have. Fun fact, if you've only played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, you probably haven't heard of the Keyblade War. And your life is richer for it. For anyone still lost, you then get a wordless recap of the storyline of the whole series so far, set to a music track by Totally Still Cool in 2018, DJ Skrillex. Taste, what a bit too sweet. I'm sorry, who was that dude getting got by Xehanort? And who the heck was the lady with the blue hair? And why did that kid have Sora's face? Uh, I think they're all from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep? Birth by what now? That can't be what it's called. No. Before you have time to wiki who the hell those people were, you're thrown into Kingdom Hearts' version of a character creator and tutorial, complete with boss fight before being told off by the wizard from Fantasia. However, the darkness nearly took control of you and your grasp of your new abilities leaves much to be desired. <gasps> now you're probably thinking, but Ellen, this is about achievements just for starting a game. There's a boss fight and we haven't even got anything yet. And to that I say, technically, we're not playing Kingdom Hearts 3 yet. See, when you finally fly off to start Kingdom Hearts 3's main adventure, a whole half hour after pressing the start button, it's revealed to you that you've actually been playing Kingdom Hearts 2.9 this whole time. So when you're awarded with the trophy slash achievement A New Journey, that's for properly starting Kingdom Hearts 3. Loophole! But wait. Does this mean that there are 14 Kingdom Hearts games now? Luke, update the wiki! On it! On Xbox, achievements award Gamer Score, and some players like their Gamer Score to end in a well rounded 5 or 0. So in 2012, when developers WayForward Technologies released Double Dragon Neon, they knew the chaos and pain they were about to unleash into the world. Why is that? Well, because when you press start for the first time, you're rewarded with this. The monsters. Start up this game and you're rewarded with the achievement Skullmageddon's Curse, which awards a single point of gamer score, ruining anyone's perfectly balanced G's. Some things you shouldn't joke about. Oh man, not this again. Look at the description and you'll see Nyahaha, now finish what you have started. And what does this mean? Well, in order to rebalance your gamer score to a nice round 5 or 0, you have to play through the whole game and defeat Skullmageddon for 19G. Well, joke's on you, Double Dragon Neon, because lots of other games did this exact same joke. So I'm off to play four of them. Hope they're on Game Pass. I hope they're still using this frequency. They're trying to help launch a... Ah, here we go. The Half-Life series introduced possibly the most iconic character in game history, Noam Chomsky. 
Yes, this cute little garden gnome became a favourite amongst Valve fans, after it was introduced in Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and made appearances in Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. He received a legendary status after being tied to many achievements, all of which included carting him around with his happy little face looking up at you. The first and trickiest achievement was Little Rocket Man in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which wanted players to, quote, send the garden gnome into space. What this meant was players had to lug him from the beginning of the game to a rocket near the end of the game. We'll need to step up the launch schedule. And now as soon as you get here with the signature data, we'll encode the satellite and get the damn thing into orbit. And what it really meant was a pain in the arse. But in November 2020, while other billionaires were working towards sending themselves into space, Valve founder Gabe Newell decided to send someone way more interesting, a 3D printed Noam Chomsky. Working with the Weta Workshop and Rocket Lab, Gabe stuck Noam Chomsky onto the side of a real-life rocket and blasted him into real-life outer space. I guess Half-Life 3 must be practically finished for Gabe to be doing this. Aw, oh, at least Noam Chomsky looks like he's having fun. After this, anyone starting up a game of Half-Life Alex was automatically awarded the achievement Gnome Alone with the description, If you are reading this achievement, Gabe Newell has successfully launched Noam Chomsky into space. This achievement was also added to Half-Life 2 Episode 2, so if you've not played that, you can also get it just for booting up the game for the first time. And as a small bonus, the game is good. Don't know if that's something important to you, Achievement Hunters? And there goes the fairing, and welcome to space, Mr. Noam Chomsky. Well, none of them were on Game Pass, so it was an expensive tantrum. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, those were some of the games that gave you an achievement just for starting the game. How generous, I think it's nice. Uh, can you think of any other examples? If so, drop them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then YouTube thinks you will enjoy these ones. And who are you to call YouTube a liar? Huh? Hey? And while you, while you make up for it by subscribing to our channel, please. I think it's the least you could do. And also, if you really like this, then why not uh, join our Patreon uh, the, and become a part of the OX Supporters Club. There's a cool Discord. It's rad. See you there. Bye.